Hello and welcome to Jamie TV and thank you very much for tuning in. Today I get to show you two brand new bases from the Vintage Icon series and as you will already have noticed both bases are of the Relic Finish variety and I dare say that opinion will already be divided right down the middle about these bases without even hearing them. In fact some people have probably already done the thumbs down business and cleared off to watch another video and that's fine but please do stay tuned even if you don't like a relic finish stay tuned and let me tell you all about these wonderful instruments because vintage do make these bases in a regular finish as well so let me tell you all about them As you can see both bases are loving and faithful tributes to the two most popular bass guitar designs in the short history of bass guitar. Now I've been a professional bass player now for many many years because I'm very very old and I also used to work in a music shop so I've played hundreds and hundreds of examples of these kinds of basses. Now this one this is by far and away the finest P bass I have ever played. And uh, the J bass is, I've probably played two other examples that are as good as this. So, the only thing that these basses don't have is what some people might say the correct name on the headstock. So, it's up to you to decide, and I can't decide for you, but how important is it to have that name on the headstock? I mean, I totally understand why some people really, really want that, but is it perhaps more important to have a bass that plays beautifully and has the exact sound that you crave, but doesn't break the bank? could enthuse to you all day long about how much I've fallen in love with this particular bass but that'll be a super long video so I'm going to try and stick to the main points although that's not really my forte as you may have noticed but I'll do my best so the P bass is the most revered most classic most recorded most gigged bass design in the history of music and this model captures exactly what that's all about it has every little nuance every little quality that you'll be looking for if that's the kind of bass that you want with one exception there's just one little detail that's different and that is it's not heavy it weighs in at just eight pounds and i know that's true because i checked it myself so this is an instrument that's going to give you all the qualities that you're looking for the feel the sound but it's not going to break the bank and it's not going to break your back it has all Wilkinson hardware on it. I'm not going to try and reel off a whole bunch of specs, by the way, because I'm terrible at that. I'm just going to put them on the screen. But no, I can't get it wrong, can I? You would have thought. So it has all Wilkinson hardware, which is the best in the business. And the pickup. Now, the pickup. You know, that split coil pickup sound, it's kind of, it doesn't have too much super low. It has just exactly the right amount of low to have punch, to be very present in a mix, to be sort of an undeniable force. But uh, it also has a certain amount of grunt. If you really dig in, it can really bite and be really attacking, but you can back off and it sounds super sweet. This pickup has all of that with just a little bit more output. So it's just got that bit more poke and you know we all like a little bit more poke I 
I love bass guitars. Everything about them, all the different shapes and styles, I just can't get enough of them. But if I had to pick one classic bass guitar design that's been my favourite, it would be the J-Bass. I just love the way that a, a good J-Bass sits, a slightly sit up and beg position and the rich tonal varieties you can get from the two split coils. And I have a few basses made in that style. And much like I said about the V4 and the way that it is basically a P bass, only slightly better for a lot less money. This bass captures exactly what a J bass should be all about. It has the exact character. I mean, tone wise, this bass, I just, again, I could go on all day about this. The, the tonal varieties you can get from these split coils. I mean, they are the classic sounds. They are exactly the sounds that you would expect and, and want, but there's just like a little bit more there. There's, there's more output from these pickups than, than the classic pickups. Um, and more, a bit more punch. And it just seems to be endless. The amount of variety you can get out of just two old fashioned style pickups. Again, the hardware is all Wilkinson, which is flawless. And it's just exactly what it should be, but is slightly lighter actually than this one. Just a nuts lighter. Again, I checked that myself. So in conclusion, I mean, when you, when you have a favorite style of bass and you find another one that is really really exceptional you know that's that's special this bass is really very very special i would marry this bass whilst conducting a rampant affair on the side with this one i think Vintage Indoor C. Here at my YouTube channel, I am completely honest and sincere about everything. At the end of the day, a lot of people go out and buy these instruments because I play them. So I like to be able to stand by every single word I say about them. So being totally honest, if I ask myself an honest question, would I buy a relic instrument? Well, normally no. If I was choosing from a catalog of finishes, the Relic would not be my first choice. However, these two instruments are so good that if it wasn't for the fact that I'm a musician, a full-time musician who's been in lockdown for several months and so hasn't really worked very much, um, I wouldn't be sending them back. Um, they'd have to fight me for them, but um, the day that uh, these go back, I'm gonna be very upset. Um, but having said that about relic finishes, the first vintage that I actually acquired was this fretless over here. At the time I was still a total headstock snob. I honestly believed that you had to spend thousands of pounds to get a great instrument. I'd had three fretlesses before, never really connected with them. And picked this up at a guitar show just expecting it to be pants really, you know. Um, and just connected with it straight away. It is such a great instrument. And so immediately I approached Vintage to see if I could get some kind of deal going on. And very, very fortunately for me, I became a Vintage artist. So a little word in defense of relics. Um, opinion on relic instruments is very divided. I get it. A lot of people hate them. I totally get it. But if you crave that very worn finish, that sort of, it's a brand new instrument to you, but it looks old. Well, instruments don't wear like they used to. I mean, those old 60s, 70s instruments, the finish was not anything like 
it is now on the cheapest of instruments. People say in forums on the internet, you know, where they like to argue about things for some reason, um, that they would rather buy a brand new instrument and gig it and wear it out themselves. And yeah, I get that, but, but they don't wear the same. This kind of wear, you just don't get now because the the paint jobs now on brand new instruments no matter how cheap are just so good so there is a call for this and at the end of the day if there weren't an awful lot of people out there who do love this look then companies like vintage wouldn't be making them so how good a job are they doing well these instruments they they sell for a very reasonable price these have not been done um you know in some sort of um you know by some expensive luthier taking days and days to get some kind of incredible finish on them but yeah it is incredible it's not like a a photo relic job like you see on some of those cheaper instruments this is actually uh the paint's actually been taken away from the wood and it's been done quite authentically in all the places where you would normally see that kind of wear i mean they just they look great actually um this one too but the thing that's particularly stunning for me about the finish on these two instruments is the necks because i'm really funny about necks i'm not really a big fan of high gloss necks and yeah you might think well you wouldn't expect to see a high gloss uh, neck finish on a relic instrument but yeah I've seen that uh, amusing as it is um, but the the finish on both these necks is very flat it's kind of satiny there is some there is some lacquer I'm sure but it just has that nice that nice flat finish that I like because I find the high gloss uh, when I'm shooting around the neck it, it can be sticky it can be restrictive um but on these it's kind of the necks are they're not they're not made rough but they are just nice and smooth to glide around this one actually slightly more so fretless vintage which actually was called a v96 once upon a time that's what it says on the headstock up here but these were renamed the vj74 and over here we have the base i'm supposed to be talking to you about the uh brand new vj74 fretted relic version now when i first saw this i mean like i said before this i wouldn't have sought this out because it's a relic finish but when i played it I just had to have it regardless of what it looked like because it was such a stunning instrument if you look closely at the at the relic job that's been done on this one you'll see that um, it's kind of an unofficial tribute to Jacko which is a lovely thing for any bass player to own now looking at the new model the fretted version yes frets on a Jacko tribute maybe that's a crime against god and all things bass i'm not sure but it is a stunning stunning instrument it's just absolutely wonderful and the thing i wanted to point out is total honesty on this channel the actual relic job if you look at the pattern the pattern of the relic wear is more or less the same however I can tell you that the way that it's been done has been drastically improved from the way it used to be done. Now it looks fine on this model. It you know it it actually it looks pretty well, but the way it's done now is just much more natural looking. <laughs> I was 
sat on the sofa this morning eating my muesli just thinking about making this video and thinking about what I was going to say and when I came to thinking about how I was going to wrap up this video I really wasn't quite sure but I was having a little troll through Facebook as you do in the morning you know and in a guitar group I saw this really interesting post from this guy and so I'm going to leave you with this little anecdote um, this guy had posted to say that he had a four grand guitar which he just dinged now he'd had it stood at the side of the sofa and he'd I think he said he'd knocked the remote off the arm of the sofa and it had dinged the guitar All right, and this guy was heartbroken <laughs> he's, he's really upset because he's put a little mark on the front of his very very expensive guitar and I really, really, really wanted to say to this guy, do you not realise that all over the world there are musicians selling their instruments because they haven't worked for so long now? Selling their instruments just so they can afford to eat. And I really, I really, really wanted to have a go at this guy. You know, like when you type really ooh, furiously and, you, and then you just delete it because you think, no, no you know life's too short and I, I ended up I just put I just put oh just put a Batman sticker over it and carry on which is exactly what I do <laughs> but but the thing is is my point is right why spend four grand on a guitar if you've got four grand right you don't need to spend it on a guitar you buy a vintage get a better guitar for a lot lot less and with the change, if you've got that kind of money, you know, have a nice holiday, buy a nice car, or, or both. There is no need to spend that kind of money on a musical instrument. And Vintage are proving that with these big selling, very, very professional selling, more, more than good enough to record a professional album with, to go and do a world tour with an enormous band with as many people are now doing times are changing when i first became interested in vintage as a brand they were regarded as um, a slightly better than starter kind of an instrument but what vintage do is they don't have grades of instrument you don't like when you go on websites for most instruments you see there's kind of like a starter version and a slightly more expensive version. And they go up in grades from reasonably affordable to stupid. And, um, and, and on the stupidly expensive model, it has all the parts that you want, all the features that you desire. Vintage don't do that. Vintage have a price point. And for that price point, they make the very best instrument that they possibly can. And they are stunning. But don't take my word for it. You know, go out. If you've never played a vintage, go out and find one. Try it out. And it may just very well change your opinion of what, what musical instruments really are all about. What they should be about, right? Buy a vintage. Take it out on stage. And don't stress about whether you get a little mark on it or whatever. At that price range, you don't need to. Get out on stage and rag the shit out of it. And have fun and enjoy it. It's an instrument. It's not for putting in a glass cabinet and worshipping. Right? So don't pissy pants about. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Be good. And buy a vintage. See you later.